Ah, love. It's always the same old story. Though, in this case, instead of bonding over movies and spaghetti dinners, it's more like bridge repair and fighting off hordes of walkers. How John Dory met the love of his life on this week's Fear the Walking Dead, Season 4, Episode 5. Laura. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome to this week's review of Fear the Walking Dead. So yes, of course, spoilers are a coming. Alright, so, uh, backstory this week, and I think a really nice piece. You know, not a whole lot of action going on. We did have a requisite walker fight. Uh, but really a lot of character work in this episode. And, you know, I have to say, I enjoyed it. I, I like John Dory. I was intrigued in hearing about his story. And the character work, the acting, the back and forth between him and Jenna Elfman, between him and Naomi, was, I think, incredibly well done. Uh, it, it really was, was sort of engaging and just catching a little bit more of these quiet moments. I don't think it was a perfect episode. There were some issues that I had with it. Uh, but I think overall it told a, a, a good story. And I loved how they even just started sort of things out. Uh, taking time with all of those individual scenes. We have the gun. We can see that this is sort of a, a ritual uh, uh, for John, you know, this regular cleaning, this care of these weapons, even though he doesn't like them, even though he doesn't really use them, uh, as we learn later on, still their maintenance, you know, it's, it's a good routine. And in fact, you figure that that's got to be a lot of John's life really is this routine. It's the only way to sort of persist while being alone for such a long period of time. Uh, I did like his setup, a moat, I think this is the first time we've really caught a moat like this. Not deep, just enough to sort of slow down. Uh, he's got a cabin at the edge of a river, which allows him to fish. Uh, so, I mean, kind of a good little setup there. I was expecting more, considering what we heard uh, about John being by himself for so long. So I was kind of surprised with the small cabin. Uh, but I, I loved sort of the, the, the time taken to show the routine. Uh, it really kind of gave that scale of this is just what he's been repeating over and over uh, for a very long period of time. You know, getting up, he cleans his gun, he plays his games, he forages uh, uh, food for around himself, um, just getting water, just really kind of, you know, again, constant uh, bits. The one thing I really loved in that opening scene uh, was <laughs> him playing Scrabble against himself. Yes, that's amusing. But when he started talking all the words splat and that and, and Working that, it just, it made me think of when we first met him, that he's just kind of practicing words because he doesn't get to talk. Uh, and later on when he got to the platypus and we realized those are all variations of those words of the letters that he has that he's going back and forth over and over again. I thought that was a real great little character bit. It shows sort of an intelligence, a reason for why he's doing this. It's not just sort of, sort of a, a play on, on practicing speech. But he's actually just reversing and moving all of these different combinations of letters around until he finds the best score. So I love that as a great bit of character work in that opening sequence. But of course, his routine is shifted one night uh, when Naomi or Laura comes uh, and arrives <laughs> at the edge of a boat. And I love he did have a caution. You know, he's looking for, <laughs> he's looking for people. He's recognizing not just a walker, because that would have been a horrible moment, obviously, coming up with a mat an axe. Even if she woke up there, of like, ah! It's, it's just not really the way that you want to meet someone. Um, but it, so I did like the care that he was taking. He was obviously observant. Uh, and then the rest of the episode pretty much dealing with their little bonding. You know, and we look at the learned backstory through all of this too. You know, John, we knew, uh, he told Morgan was a, a police officer and this confirmed it. Sort of wonder how many stories people tell. Uh, but his whole gunslinger bit was he used to work at a Wild West show. That's what he did for fun. Uh, it sort of explains everything. And then of course, one night coming home from the Wild West show, he uh, goes into his store, there's a robber, he identifies himself as a cop. The guy turns, John shoots to wound, shoots him in the leg, but because the guy turned, changed the angle of the wound, went right into the main meat of his leg, probably hit the femoral artery, and he just bleeds out right there. So, 
John, while a cop, not, uh, not very pro-gun um, for this, which again was an interesting blend, despite, again, the ritual that he has with cleaning his weapons. He has absolutely no intent to use them. And I have to say, I did like his reasoning that he even gave. One, they cause problems. Sure, maybe a little different in the apocalypse, well, but mainly that they draw more walkers in. And that's true. Sharp noise heard over a long period of distance that is going to beckon any uh, sound reactive walkers. So, well, you know, again, it just it gives a good understanding not only of why he is staying away from a, a practical standpoint, uh, but also from a personal uh, standpoint. He... Uh, guns, you know, make him nervous now. We can see the downside of them. Uh, and also kind of an interesting story there why he ends up moving to this cabin. It's because everyone called him a hero. And I'm sure someone who is as sweet, as thoughtful as John, not only feeling bad enough about killing somebody he did not intend to kill, uh, but also then the rest of the town laying adoration against him like he did such the right thing. So it just sort of piles on those stressors more. So, you know, nice little history there for uh, for John of why he's out in the cabin. Naomi, not so much. Shows up wounded, knife wound, or really know how that happened. She was in a boat, so obviously that wasn't her car that came over. She's a better driver than that. It doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> if you, there's walkers, you're swerving around. Um, but yeah, we don't really get much on her, except for that one bit uh, that night as she kind of seems to have this quiet, honest, desperate moment with John as he wakes up is that uh, I lost my child. Uh, that's really the only bit that we give. And, it, it, you know, and, and that gives sort of an interesting little twist on what Naomi's background is. Is, is she, she lost a child, she doesn't want that type of attachment, she doesn't want to stay anywhere, and thus kind of like Morgan in a way wants to constantly move, doesn't want to get close to anyone, doesn't want to feel that loss. Or was it a literal statement? Did she actually lose her child? And that's why she can't stay, that she is searching for her child. Um, she didn't seem to have the same kind of pressed energy on it like every time. I mean, yes, she had to leave. She was insisted on going, but it wasn't like, I got to get out of here right now because my kid's somewhere lost out there. So she seems to know that she's going to be out there for a while, taking the time to learn from John, which I thought was also very smart on her. Learn how to fish if you don't know how to fish. Learn how to clean fish if you don't know how to do that. Teach a person to fish, you feed them for life. It's a saying or something. Um, so I like the fact that she was taking time with that. Uh, but it wasn't a pressing thing like her kid is just out there. So if she has lost her kid in that sense, uh, it's a distance thing, like she's out there somewhere with the dad, couldn't track them down. I have to keep moving in order to eventually find them. It doesn't explain why she would then hook up and stick around at the diamond, which would be after all of this. Um, but again, just we don't know that much from, from Naomi, so we got to sort of guess. I'm thinking more like the kid is dead, but like I said, it could go either way. Uh, now the town. Um... Quite interesting. Okay, they sort of give a reason of why this place has nobody there. Uh, that they closed the road just before everything went to hell, and John hasn't seen anybody since. It doesn't seem like there should be more people living around, but I guess maybe this is just some little backwater spot. It was straight up, so when the road was closed down, covered up with construction, it just sort of waved people off. That's the only reason that I can sort of guess, because yeah, we, we don't know how long this is in the apocalypse. Maybe a year or so. Uh, let's say a halfway point. You know, it's, it's hard to sort of get that that time. The diamond's been a year, but we know something happened months beforehand. So maybe 18 months, somewhere a year, 18 months into the apocalypse. Uh, find it hard to think that people searching for stuff would not have come across this place. Even if there was road construction, a smart searcher might decide, hey, maybe that place hasn't been picked over. Uh, at least explains maybe why crowds, uh, uh, there isn't anybody, you know, not a lot of traffic going by, not a lot of walkers in this sense. We also don't know what the population density is here um, and how many people might have been taken out by, by the walkers. I mean, maybe this is one of those few but far between places uh, and there was a huge hit of people getting infected and so there's not a whole lot of people left. we got to sort of guess uh, on that set. So it seemed a little bit of a stretch 
but I, you know, okay, we'll go on with it. Uh, certainly trustworthy of John there not to just hoard everything and take it to his place that he still on Tuesdays comes out to the store, uh, <laughs> trades his movies out, which I thought was really cute, uh, and just picks stuff off the shelf. It's not going to last too long. I mean, it was just, that, that was the only thing. It was like, this is cute. It's cool. It gives that personal character for John, but doesn't seem entirely practical. But that's okay. Uh, I did love Naomi, Laura, leaving um, Splint material, collecting all the, the elements that you would need for Splint. The tape, small little uh, uh, bits of wood and, and, and stuff that can lash on there. Uh, uh, gauze and, and medical tape and stuff all together so that people may not think of stuff and see that it's all right there. Anyway, just, I thought that was sort of a sweet bit for, for Laura um, to put. I also love the fact that <laughs> it was John who just gave her the name Laura. You know, this is my name. Obviously, you don't want to tell me your name, so I'm going to call you this. I thought, that was, I thought that was kind of sweet. Just stepped into it. That was the thing that this set up is really how sweet and thoughtful John uh, is as a person. Uh, and, I, and I sort of love that, that continual reinforcement of that idea. Uh, but yeah, so uh, the, the store run, while it was cool, it, it did seem a little, just a little surprising that there's not that many people out there that people wouldn't have run into this place yet. And our walker problem that we had, somebody going over the edge, knocking open a guard railing, and that's why you might have occasional walkers falling down uh, uh, into this road. Again, we got walkers here, but we don't have people wandering in the area. But that, that's okay. Again, we'll get past that. Uh, I did kind of like the idea. It was just sort of a thought of this is what we need repair for, and this is what's causing it. You know, it's, again, a nice kind of little bonding moment there. And, of course, it gave a lot of reinforcement story for the whole John anti-gun stance that he was uh, throughout most of the episode. Uh, but when we get to that whole kind of final battle sequence where he overcomes that moment, I didn't really like the setup. I mean, again, I'm... I'm going with the idea that this is a sparse community and this is why this place hasn't been found and checked over and picked over and all of that. Okay. The walkers being drawn, especially with, with everything knocked over. Okay, so we had the car go was over the edge. There's a walker in the car that went over the edge. It is making noise and that is drawing the rest of the walkers in towards that broken open section of, uh, of bridge. I don't really believe that. I don't believe that that's making so much noise to draw so many walkers in. Uh, now, what seems to have been a better idea, or what's more implied, is you had a bit of a horde of a herd moving through that area, and they might have heard something, and as one walker goes in, it draws in the rest. I could sort of kind of go with that, but there didn't seem to be enough of a, of a sound to really make that type of noise. And then when the walkers went in, so they all float down what we seem to be some distance down the river. And then they all just wash up ashore right in front of John's place. Not kind of spread out. It just, it, it, it seemed, I, I know what the idea of that scene was. Is they get overturned and this is what support, and, and, and Naomi gets in danger, Laura gets in danger, and that's why John has to go ahead and break his anti-gun thing and pull them out. And like a total badass, which he did look like, take them all out. That was super cool. I get that. I don't think they needed the bridge to do that. They could have just had a herd wander through the area, okay? It doesn't have to cross the, uh, the river. It could be on his side of the river. And it just came in. It was just the idea of using that bridge as a reason to draw the walkers that then have to push the car over, then all fall into the water, go past that walker that's drawing them in, and then all happen to get offshore at that same spot. There's a bend in the river, maybe, and that's one of the risks where they can come up. They, 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 and they could go with that, but they didn't really, they didn't hit that point. And it just made it, again, the problem that I found that fear has sometimes is they wanted John to get to the point where uh, Naomi was in danger and he had to shoot up the walkers, toss away his fear of guns in order to, to save her life, and that's what's going to make the change. I get that. The way they got to it was overly clunky. I think it would have just been just been better 
even if that implied that there was another herd coming through and you saw that in a wider shot from the bridge and then it bypassed and just happened to go down the side of the shore and that's how it got onto to, uh, John's property. So, I mean, I just, I just think that would have worked a little better. The idea of, of those walkers getting drawn and the bridge and everything, just, I didn't, I just, I didn't buy it. All right, I know we expected that was going to be the big scene, and it was, it was action-packed. I just, I had some issues with the setup. Uh, and the following scene also I thought was really kind of predictable, but it was also emotionally kind of touching. So I'm going to call it our scene of the week for this week. And of course, that is the please don't go uh, section. John cleaning the gun, giving it to Laura, because wants her to be safe. Yes, guns cause issues, but obviously <laughs> there is a time to use them. So he gives her uh, his other <laughs> half of his set in order to protect her. Uh, and then can't be with her, wants to go away. Why? Because I love you. Yes, it was kind of cheesy, but I gotta say, just, just the way that it was all delivered, the way it was handled, I thought was touching. And I also say, I love the line, if you want to stay, I'll go, because you have to be alive. Because if you're alive, then the world feels alive. I mean, if you want any motivation to keep going, to fight every day, that's it right there. Um, and yes, it leads to the kiss, which was the, and that's kind of what I was expecting. Unfortunately, as I saw this, I'm like, all right, this is how it's going to lay out. They're going to have a moment. They're going to kiss. They're going to have their little togetherness for one night. He's finally going to get a good night's sleep because he's only been getting one or two hours lately. This will be that finally one really good night and he'll wake up and she'll be gone. And that's exactly how it sort of panned out. So, it, yes, it was predictable, but I still thought that it was handled really well. And leaving the notes in the Scrabble keys, uh, I love you too, I'm sorry. That was kind of, that was a perfect little character bit. You know, they had some bondings in their short period of time. What, a week? Two weeks, maybe, the most. Uh, I don't know how long it would have taken that to heal. Anyway, uh, but that was cute. And when we get our flash forward moment, to see that he's still carrying around those pieces with her. That's what drives John, uh, I thought was also very sweet. And then in our little coda, we got that last moment between him and, and Morgan, which, again, in some ways, very simple. You had to say what it is. You can't take time. Taking time, you know, wasting time like that, that's how you lose people. So that's Morgan Light. But these people are alive, our Strand and our Alicia and our Luciana, and they're still there. So we've got to go with them and we got to fight them and we got to be with them. And this is the way that life is. That was great. That was a good way to sort of tear, carry, turn it around. Um, but a little simplistic in some ways, too. It just felt like, okay, this is the point where we've got to switch it around and make sure everybody come together. Um, but I don't know. It was nice, and you can see Morgan in a way kind of knocking him himself in the head like, ah, oh, why, why do I keep missing this simple lesson? It's about the people that are alive here. It's about these moments now. That's what life is about, and that's what is worth fighting for. All right, just a couple of small things. Oh, one, uh, did you guys notice when Naomi tried to steal John's truck there, and he was like, no, the keys, keys are in the visor. When she found the Range Rover in that last shot with Alicia there, it's the first place that she checked the, for the keys were up in the visor. So, she does learn from her time with John. And it's not just about fishing. Uh, Naomi being upset with John about the whole kind of super stabby moment he had in the car uh, with her comment of, I've seen people get really sick just exposed to this stuff, these walker guts. They're reinforcing, I'm noticing, again, with Walking Dead and with Fear Now, sort of reinforcing the you can't just be exposed to walker guts uh, and be okay. It did seem for a little bit it was like, what's the magic solution? Pour walker guts over yourself and everything will be fine. Uh, and now, again, reinforcing the idea of like, this is why you can't just do this all the time. There's a serious downside to being exposed to this stuff. So, I like the consistency. Good move. Oh, the Billy Bass hooked up to the alarm clock. What a uh, what a way to wake up. Actually, John was pretty well set there. He had that, had a little charge right over. It was solar, I'm going to guess, so he could watch his TV. Um, kind of a sweet little setup in his cabin. 
All right, well, I think that pretty much covers everything. So three more episodes left uh, in this uh, spring section in this half season. So uh, I am hoping we kind of deal with the whole diamond thing and find out what the actual fallout of that is. And did Maddie die? Is Naomi dead? I mean, again, Maddie seems to be dead, or at least Nick seems to think so, seem to have thought so, sorry, uh, with his obsessive reactions and the pursuit against the vultures. That seems to be the reason. Uh, Naomi was told that she was dead, that nobody got out of there alive, but he might be surprised by things. Who knows? But hopefully we will get that all sorted out by the end of uh, this half season. So looking forward to that. Anyway, that's going to wrap us up for tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you enjoyed this review, please go ahead and hit that like button. Thoughts, ideas, comments, you know where to put them down in the section below. What do you guys think of this episode? Did you enjoy it? Did you find some faults? A little up, a little down? How's the season going for you? Go ahead and let me know. You can always catch me on Twitter and Instagram. I am at Darren Jakes. Subscribe if you're not. It's quick and easy. Just hit this button. Catch all these reviews. In fact, we'll throw a couple of them right here you can check out. So, that's going to be it for me. I'm D, and I'm out of here. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.